things are. So we're going into quite a nice Java section, and I think it's going to be quite a lot of fun, and it's going to be very interesting for all of you, especially if you are considering going into a bit of the coding side of things. This is quite a nice place to get started as well. So for today's demonstration, I've used SmartDraw, and I'm going to be using this through the demonstration for your wireframe as well as your site diagram. The next thing on my list for this lesson is to show you how to draw this site diagram for Savage Photography, which is the site or the digital CV that we are going to be building. I want to introduce you to a nice online software you can use called SmartDraw. And what we're going to use this for is to draw our website diagrams and um, wireframe. So let's start out with the easiest of the two and let's get a blank diagram open. The nice thing here is you don't actually have to download any software and you just use the website. So that is Smart Draw. And let's just let it load for a second and there we go. So we've got quite a simple interface here similar to what you would see on Microsoft Word. And we are just going to go here into our smart panel and take a rectangle. There we go. And let's just make this a little bit bigger and type in home. There we go. Hopefully you can all see that nice and clearly. And we're going to be naughty and just control C and control V. This is just for consistency. For any of you who don't know about Control C, there we can copy there. Go away. Copy and then Control V. There we go. Okay, so we can actually move that one over here, and there we go. So now we've got all these homes, but let's just change these. So my story, career, education, portfolio, and last but not least is our contact. There we go. The next thing we want to do is then go and connect these. So we'll go to LAN, but I want to quickly just make sure we don't want any arrowheads, so we've got that at none, and not full. Within LAN, we can then also change the LAN thickness, so let's make it a little bit thicker. There we go. And then you'll see here when we click that these little connector dots show up just to make things a bit neater. And then we can select another line here. It can run to, let's say, about there. We can check this now. And go line. Whoopsie. Oh, and it's a little... Let's just control Z. Line. There we go. And those two now connect nicely. Let's just resize you a teensy bit. There we go. And then we can just control this as well. There we go. And here we go. So for those of you who are wondering why I'm bothering with this, is trust me, when you have a more advanced site, you are going to thank me because it's very easy to fall down the rabbit hole with web design. And then you won't know what you're doing or even why you're doing it. Let's make this a tiny bit prettier because we all know this is web design. So we can make that a nice blue. Oh, and there's effects. We can have cast shadow. <laughs> it looks a little bit better. <laughs> not great, but better. Um, let me just see why you're not letting me select all of you. There we go. And we can go with my favorite later. 
and make that font a little bit bigger. So we've got home, my story, career, education, portfolio, and contact. So this would be our very basic little site diagram for our digital CVs. All right, so next on our list is going to be our wireframes. So let's just go down here, and it's right at the bottom. Here we go, wireframe. So let's click on here, and we can go with the... Uh, no, let's not go with the blank one. Let's get the browser. Most realistic option. And this is quite nice if you're doing work for clients. You can draw up a wireframe and get their approval before you spend hours and hours coding. So this is a very good practice also for yourself. Before I design any of the sites we do in our lessons, I will always go and draw up a wireframe beforehand just to make sure I've put in all the elements that I had initially planned to. So over here, we've got title, we've got a little um, back, well, backspace, undo or reverse, <laughs> our refresh and our home. Let's click into title and the site that we're going to be building is Savage Photography. We're just going to do CV for my fictitious photography sites, um, which is going to be my digital CV. And that will be www.savagephotography.fake. Let's just do .fake in case, in case there is really a savage photography site out there. If you find it, let me know. <laughs> Um, okay, so what are we wanting to do today? We wanted to, sh well, I wanted to show you how to go about making a hamburger menu. So let's have a look, see, for our symbols. Here we go. And all I want is just a rectangle for now. So let's drag in a rectangle. There we go. And I just want to zoom. Oh. Wrong way. I want to try and get the whole screen. Okay, there we go. And then let's bring this down because our hamburger menu will cover the surface area. Yeah, there we go. And then we have, in here we're going to have our logo. And we're going to have our heading one up here. Drag this down. There we go. And you can see here again that you've got all those functionalities, so we can center that, and we can center this one for fun as well. And then we're going to want to put in our different menu items. That's probably a good size. So a home. It's definitely decided to give us the biggest font. Home. Again, I'm just doing Control C, Control V, just to make life a bit quicker, and so that the sizing is consistent. Go. Okay, so we've got home. My story. Okay, so now we can see that I need to make this font smaller. Okay, there we go. Career. Education. Portfolio. And last, contact. Okay, but now we can see that to annoy me, <laughs> all my spacing's been moved. But this is actually more accurate to the site anyway. You can see a little bit of the perfectionist in me eh, is making an appearance. I'm giving myself like two more seconds on this. <laughs> okay, so there we go. And then the last thing is we want to have our little 
hamburger icon. I'm just going to sit over here. When our menu is expanded, so let's just put an X. An X in our massive text. And there we go. And we can also just align that so it makes more sense. So we've got our heading, and then over here is going to be our image. So let's go and look for a text placeholder. And this is just going to be image. And this will, of course, be our home page. So that's just a very simple and quick explanation as to how to go about doing a wireframe. And you'll see this will come in a lot handier later on. And I do encourage you to go and practice as we're going through the digital CV because there are there is a page that I'm going to ask you to do yourself and customize and share with us later. But anyway, let's go and get back to the rest of the lesson and then we can start coding up this home page. Let's talk a bit about JavaScripting. So JavaScript was first released by Sun Microsystems in 1995. Many websites and applications on your computer will actually not run unless you have got Java installed. And Java is a very fast, secure, and reliable coding platform. And the best part about Java is that most of your softwares here are going to be for free. Isn't that amazing? I love it when the software is free. Um, so what can Java be used for? Well, Java can be used to do the programming for your desktop computers, for gaming, you can use them on your cell phone, and also it can be used for things like supercomputers, which is very impressive, so it's a nice large range of different applications for our Java scripting, which is one of the main reasons it is so popular. Then we're going to talk about what are Java functions. Well, there are segments of JavaScript, and you will see them within the script tags within your HTML code, and functions need to be called or invoked within HTML. So you need to let your HTML document know that you're going to be working with a function. So that is why we put it within our script tag to say, hey, we're going to be running some Java code. And here's a little example. So you'll have your function name, and then you'll have your parameters 1 and 2, and then you will have to name it. So these are the two things we're using, which would be your parameters, and that will show what it is that you are trying to accomplish within your JavaScript. All right, it's that time finally. You know we're listening to me talk about slides. We're going to go in and do a demo. So I'm going to be building a site for Savage Photography, and this can then be molded into a digital CV for you to use when applying for jobs. So this is quite a cool opportunity. Don't forget that you can always consult your HTML tag library that I've put into your starter packs. You can go and have a look there for any extra functionality you'd like to add. But just remember to also have a bit of fun with it and put your personality in it as well. Now that we've laid down the groundwork, I think we should start going ahead with our digital CV. Of course, all of you can follow along with me, but a key point here is to go and customize it to whatever your skill set is that you're wanting to share with everyone. And then we can all go and have a look and compare notes on what everyone else is doing. But my goals with this part of the CV, at least, is to show you how to do a hamburger menu and also how to create a hero image, just so that there's quite a sleek look to your website and it'll look very professional and as I said, very like streamlined, simple, but very effective. So I've gone ahead and quickly saved my HTML as my homepage over here, and we're just going to start building this site now from scratch. So the first thing we want to do is just say that this is our homepage in our title section, and the site is called Savage Photography. We can type that in there, and we can save that. And then what I want to do is then open it up in a preview. And we can see here it says home page, savage photography. And we can go ahead and just split the screen up so we can see what I'm doing. So we, as we know, we want to always make sure our indentation is correct. So let's quickly go and fix this just for good practice. And then we, there we go. 
Okay, so we're all set up nicely. Let's get coding. So we know already we want this to look pretty. And in order for it to look pretty, we need to go and add in a link to a CSS file. So I, I normally forget. <laughs> so we're going to just do this first. So we're going to go link rel is equal to style sheets. And then href is equal to, and that just leaves it blank. And we're going to go up to new document and go to CSS. And let's just save that for now. And that can also be home CSS. There we go. Okay, so in here, just remove the equals. And then we can pick our URL, which will be home CSS. There we go. And don't forget to close that off. We've now created our link over there. The next thing we want to do is let's go into our body and let's start getting that nice um, hamburger menu that we're wanting to do. Let's get that started and we can do that by creating our href links. To start off with, we're going to create a div and our div ID is going to be my side nav. There we go. And then we're going to have our class. Right, we're going to change that. And then within body, we're going to have our div and our div ID, just so we can name it when we are uh, referring to it later in CSS and within our Java code that we're going to be using. We will then refer to this as hamburger. And the class is equal to side nav. There we go. And let's just make some space. And we'll tab in here. So I'm going to start off with a href is equal to <laughs> home.html and that is called home. So that is how it will display on your website. So we can go and copy this a few times now. So we've got six pages, so two, three, four, five, six. In order to save us some time, I've gone ahead and just created all of the other pages. Um, so you, we've all done this a few times so far, so I'm confident that you can all go and, you know, create these CSS and HTML documents. As you can see, I haven't done anything in them yet, so you haven't missed out on anything, don't worry. But it just allows me a bit more time in the lesson to talk to all of you. So we've got home, then this is, well, we can clear this, and go equals... This one's going to be my story. Go. And then here we can say my story. Should have actually. Let's do this quickly. I told you that <laughs> copy paste is going to become one of your best friends. There we go. And in here, we're just going to go equals. Next is career. There we go. Then we've got education. Portfolio. And last, references. So let's just type in the names of the pages, so career, education, portfolio, and references. Okay, let's save that. Okay, and we've got them showing up at the top. So, uh, my, store, my story, <laughs> career, education, portfolio, and references. And if we click on them, we don't, we're not going to see anything at this point. 
All right, so I just had a little bit of a brainwave, so I have decided to change one thing here, and that's just that I want references to actually be contact page. So instead of references, we are just going to have a contact page. that and it's going to be contact I went ahead and did this earlier there we now have got a contact page as well okay let's just save that I guess at this point this is what we have so what we need to do now is introduce some of our more advanced functionality so that we can include our JavaScript the first line of code we are going to enter is going to be a href and then we're going to say java script and that's going to be void and the class is going to equal a close button oopsie uh, we are confusing everything. There we go. Okay, and that is equal to close button or BTN for short. And then on click, we want to call close nav. And then at times I know this is making zero sense to you at this point and if it is you are a genius okay okay so we've got quite a little scary little section so we've got ahrefs so we're referencing JavaScript and we are, so this void here means we're not returning any values by referencing Java. So what, so Java classes are there to make our lives a lot easier, and they would generally have, a, well, they do have a pre-programmed set of instructions or calculations that they can run. And in this case, we are cause, calling a class that has already done all the work that we need to create a close button. So what we're saying here is call the class that knows how to make close button and then when I click it so on click I want you to call close so we're calling the class that knows how to close the button and then when I click on the button I want it to run that code so that the, the side menu then closes I can't go too in depth here but we are hoping to have a full Java course coming to Shaw Academy and then let me run this and show you what it does. There we go. Yes, yeah, so now we've just got our little X here. And if I look here, I can see that there's an extra... There we go. Oops, you didn't save it. Okay, so now that is gone. So your at times over here is actually the X. See? So as we take away the at times, the X disappears. Okay, back to where we were. So now we've added in our line of JavaScripting over here. And then the next thing we need to do is actually put this within a div container. So we're going to go up here and go div ID is equal to, and we can call this hamburger, because why not? So it could either be hamburger or my nav. Class is equal to side nav. And then all of this is going to fit in there. So we can come here and close our div. Remember again, you want to line everything up nicely. And let's see what that did. Yes, at this point, 
hasn't made too much of a difference in our lives. But we are going to change that. Okay, and the next... But we are going to change that. So things are going to look a little bit weird in the beginning this time, just because we are doing the HTML before we do the CSS. So don't worry, it will all come together when we get formatting in. And I also decided to use this approach, just so you can see the difference that, HT that the CSS actually makes to our HTML. So we're going to be celebrating CSS by the end of this demo. So the next thing I want to introduce is going to be a little image. So IMG alternate is going to be logo and the source is going to equal go in here and this is our little logo. Oopsie. They're really thinking CSS and we haven't even gotten there yet. I'm going to close that and see where it pops up. Okay, so that just looks weird. Anyway, I'm finding every part of my design in mind right now <laughs> to do it in this order. Okay, the next thing is going to be getting our little burger icon to show up. So we want the burger icon. So we're going to say span style is equal to font size, oopsie, size 30px, and then we want the cursor, class, which is going to be pointer, then on click, we want it to equal Open nav. I've done it again. It's font size. Pointer. There we go. Unclick. Open nav. And then another complicated little icon name, which is going to be the at sign. Alrighty, so let's check this out. So we've got font size 30px. Okay, let's save that. Let's see. Yay, we've got a burger icon. Don't worry, in the slideshow I'm going to be going more into this. Um, and what I'm doing next, we're going to discuss more after we've done the scripting. And then our last little section. Well, almost <laughs> our last little section is going to be our JavaScript. So we're going to go script. And then in here we're going to say that we have a function. And the function is open nav. Document dot get element D. And it's going to be hamburger. Whee, there we go, hamburger. Dot style. Dot display. Equals lock. Okay. So now here we've got open nav. Where else did we see open nav? We've got close nav, and open nav is over here. So we are now saying, this is what I want to happen when we call open. <coughs> this is what we want to happen when we call open nav. Then we've got another function, and this is obviously going to be then close nav. And within here, it's going to be document dot get element by id uh, it's going to be hamburger uh, 
and dot style dot display equals none. So a key difference here is that one says none and the other says block. So this one's going to show us the block on the screen. So we're opening our nav and our block's going to show up over here. You can see it's actually in this. Our function is then going to, the, the close nav function is going to make it disappear to none. Okay, so at the moment we've still got this awful, <laughs> really bad looking HTML document. And then once we've done our little bit of JavaScripting, we're just going to quickly talk about our hero image. So we're going to have a div class. Oh, look at me not listening to my own instructions. There we go. I just did it there. Okay, div class is equal to hero image. go. And within here we're going to have div, see, div class equals hero text. And we're going to say our text can just be capturing moments. Okay, let's see where this ends up. Okay, so we have got an absolute mess of a page right now. So let's go and prove the worth of CSS by making this look semi-acceptable. <laughs> Let me just tidy this up. And then just remember to go and make sure that you have linked your CSS sheet and your HTML sheet together. Otherwise, none of the beautiful changes we are going to do are going to work. Okay, so we've got a nice clean palette here. Let's get started on making this website actually look like something. Some, this is one of those sites that like a poorly designed website, 40% of people will leave. People will leave this, this site. We should put it on the internet and check. So background image. We're going to go with that first because you all know how much I love putting a background image in. I've got, so I've just taken my own surname and built the site. I'm sure most of you, well, hopefully some of you have picked up on that um, as my digital CV if I were a photographer. And any of you can go and get images on Pixabay or any site, any free image sites. Um, but unfortunately, I can't share my images with you because they are licensed. Okay, so let's get this looking like something we can be a bit more proud of because it looks terrible now. So let's go body, comma, HTML. So we are formatting the body and the whole HTML document itself. And within here we want to say background image is going to be, well, not our background image. It's actually the Savage Photography logo. There we go. Background repeat here, and we want it to be no repeat. It's quite handy having this auto correct, well, auto fill because it just makes things a little bit easier. And then we can set the width to 100% as well. And we can make the whole site's background color. So we now have our little Savage Photography logo here. All right, there we go. That's what happened. There we go. Okay, so we have our little logo here. Now let's get started on our hero image. Okay, so within here, we are now going to go dot hero image. And within here, we are going to say background, image, and we're going to do something called a linear 
gradient. And this is just going to make it feel like there's a, almost a shadow over the work that we're doing so that we can put text on top, which is the whole point of a hero image, it's to put text on top of the, an image. So 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, comma, 5. If you know what RGBA is, go ahead and type it into Morpheus so you can look cool. You should know. If not, find out. <laughs> URL. And that's going to be our lion. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if this has done anything yet. Okay, at this point, nothing. So let's go and make sure. Yes, okay. So let's go ahead here and type in the next little section. So we're going to do height. So we're going to go height is 100% and then we're going to do the same as above so background repeat no repeat and then we can send set it background oopsie not that it'll make a difference but anyway background size is going to be 100% by 100%. Okay, so our little lion has now decided to come to the party. And we can see here we've got some text that's in black, and that's why we can't see it. And our nav is still sitting all weird and ha unhappy at the top of the screen. So let's quickly just go and fix that text. So let's go dot hero text. Okay, and here we are going to start, so font, family, I'm going to mix things up and make this Arial black, padding left, oh, oopsie, padding left is going to be 80 pixels, padding top is going to be 50, please remember that I go and measure this all out before we start coding. Otherwise, we would sit here for a very long time. I know you're all having fun, but <laughs> you always enjoy watching me do this for that long. Um, then we can go text the line we want, but at the center of the screen. Uh, position must be absolute. And then we can do height, 20%, Ooh. width, 20%. No, no, what, not width, what am I talking about? And left, <laughs> 50%. Now let's quickly, and then let's just do color, white. Okay, all of this stuff we've done a million times, so I don't want to... For all of you going through it all again, we're just doing some practical application. Okay, so we've got this over here. Okay, so my my little measurements have gone um, a bit off. So let's let's change this. I mean, now I've just said I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to show you anyway. Let's see. So let's make this 60. And that did nothing. Take away our padding, and he's staying here. So we want our text. Let's get rid of that. Yes, okay, so it's now moving up, but it's not quite sitting where I want it. So we said left 50%. Let's try this 30. There we go. See, a lot of web design is just messing around. Okay, not great there. But for the side, it's fine. Okay, so we've now got capturing moments. Text along center. Left 30. 
Okay, on to the more exciting side of life. Let's do our side nav. Okay, so within here, we want to now add in our opposite color logo. So we've got the black logo here. So let's grab the white one. So now it's just going savage, 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 savage. So let's, yeah, <laughs> let's ignore that for now. Um, we can actually just, because it's a bit distracting, just save and refresh. There we go. And background. Repeat. No repeat. Okay, display, none, height, we want it to be 100% of the length of the screen. The width can be, let's say, 250 pixels. Position must be fixed. Z index must be 1. And then top zero, left zero. And background. Oh, what? Background. Background color <laughs> must be white. And then last, overflow on the x axis. Be hidden and padding top can be 60. Let's have a quick squiz. Ooh. So now we are just unable to access it, but we can see that our hamburger is now alive. So we see we still don't have our on-click functionality there. Okay, just having a look at this quickly. I see here, let's just see what this looks like quickly. Save it. Okay, so this is a bit bigger than initially anticipated, so let's go here. I uh, see I've put in an extra X there. There we go, that's much better. Okay, onward. So the next thing we need to start looking at is going to be the fact that we actually can't see the tiny little X is here. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> uh, we can't see our hamburger. It's there, but we can't see it. So in our HTML code, this is referenced as span. So we're going to go span, and we're just going to say color is equal to white. Let's have a look, see. There we go. I love it when it's just one tiny line of code. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> Getting emotional with the code. Okay, and then the next thing we've got is dot side nav. And we want to now edit the open nav. And that is going to also be have a white. Oops. Save it. Let's see. Okay, then let's go and make this finally look a bit more socially acceptable. So let's go and introduce some padding. So we're going to go side, nav, dot, well not dot, a, so we want to now edit the links that we've created. Let's close that off. Okay, so within here we're going to do some padding. So padding is equal to 30 p pixels, px, 28, comma, 8, and 82. OK, 
care. Nothing's happened there yet. So, padding. That's why. Stuff in the wrong place. Putting commas in. You see, this is why coding is fun. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to fix it. Don't worry. So we're going to go with text, decoration. Now, who knows what this is going to do? We're going to say none, and that is going to remove what? You can tell Morpheus what's about to happen. It's giving you some time while I type out the basic stuff. And we want the color to be gray, and we want it to be displayed in a block format. Okay, hopefully you've all put into Morpheus what text decoration none is going to do, and let's find out if you're right. Ta-da! Okay, so text decoration takes away the underlining and all the other fancy stuff, and then we can see here my favorite game. Let's delete stuff, see what happens. Okay, so that was what all of our padding was doing. So we want that back. But we needed to first put it into a display block. So let's see that. Yes, yeah, it looks untidy. So we're just going to go ahead and put our display block back in. And then we've got our nice tidy setup over here. I hope you're all getting excited about this, because I think this is really cool, especially nice and early in your web design little careers. So that side nav. And the next thing we want to do is my favorite thing, as I'm sure some of you have picked up, is making hovers. It sounds cool. It is cool. I love it. So we're going to hover over these, and we want them to go black. Let's have a look. Whee! Okay, so I think that looks pretty cool. And we haven't changed this. Oh, I moved it. This is actually contact. And contact. That's the nice thing about web design. Look how easy that was. Yay! Okay, let's go back into home CSS. And we are now doing the hover. So we finished hover. Make some space. Boom. All right. So we've done the hover. Now we need to do our side, our close button. So let's go side nav. Birdcade dot. <laughs> side nav dot close button. And that's going to be, the position must be absolute. Like these positions should be absolute, but I keep forgetting. My spacing gets more aggressive when <laughs> it gets like that. Okay, color must be black. Then the top margin can be at zero. Right can be... 25 pixels. Font size can be, what did I say? 40 pixels. And margin. You know what I'm trying to spell? Margin left can be 50 pixels. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's see. Okay, there we go. So he's now moved up here. I think that looks quite a bit neater. Um, is there anything we want to change here? No, I, I think that actually looks quite nice. Across. That's right over here. Okay, if you're not happy with that, you know how to go and play around and change it. Okay, and then we've got IMG for our image. Now this is the image that I want to put that I put into the HTML earlier, which is the line icon, which is the 
it's going to be in the side panel in our, um, in our hamburger menu. There we go. Going to be 25%. Padding on the top is going to be 80. Ah. There we go. Padding on the top is going to be 80. And padding left can be 8. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so let's go back into our HTML. And here's where we commented out. So let's just do this. Now, if you did do this to carry along with me properly, remember to move your div. Big reveal. Oh, and there he is. Okay, so he's looking good. And I think the site's looking quite good. So from this point, I think we can move on to the next page in our next lesson. And I'm going to be moving on to Korea. And then I'll also be touching on contact, where I'm going to teach you how to build a form. So that's going to be quite an exciting one. And then we'll go on to portfolio and education. And then last on the list, you are going to go and tell your story on your version of this digital CV. But enough spoilers from me. Let's get back and talk about some of the more complicated things we covered today. Okay, let's talk functions. So we covered these in the live presentation, but let's have a look. So we've got script, and what script does is tell us, hey, listen, we're going to be putting some JavaScript in here. So we've got function, open, nav. So we are wanting to go and just think of it as we are now wanting to decide on that functionality when we say open nav. So we're saying document .get element by id. So it's saying this is the function. We want this to happen for open nav. And we want you to go and find anything called my nav, my side nav. And anything called my side nav, I want you to display it in a block. So remember in the code I showed you how everything was all muddled up next to each other. But as soon as we put in this line of code, everything went into a nice block. Okay, so in this one, we've got script, function, close nav, and then we've got the same, document.getElementById, my side nav. And in this one, we want to display none. So when we click on the little button that is our close navigation, when we call close navigation, we want nothing to display. So that's why that one says None. So when we open it, we want it to show in a block. And when we close it, we want nothing to show. This is the easiest way that I can put this. So coming soon, your sneak peek into Lesson 6. I cannot believe we're already at Lesson 6, can I just say. But what we're going to be covering then is going to be advanced tables, and we're going to have an introduction to...